I can't even begin to tell you how happy I was making the script for this video. I truly didn't think it was going to be a possibility for some time, let alone in a game like Rise or Sunbreak. If you've been a part of the Monster Hunter community for a while, you surely know about gore, but even if you're newer to the series or part of the fifth week, chances are that you still know about gore or at least have heard of it. That's for good reason. Gore is an absolutely fantastic monster, and I think could easily be considered a fan favorite. It's also a true flagship. The entire the entirety of War Ultimate was centered around Gore and the effects that it had. Why is Gore such a fan favorite though? It goes without saying that it looks incredible and is extremely well designed, but it goes much deeper than that. Let me give you an introduction to the frenzy spreading phenom known as Gore Magala. Now if you're a seasoned Monster Hunter player, I know that using the word antagonist is a little bit out there because it implies the sense of a grand narrative, but when you think of a story or narrative, you won't find a better entry than for Ultimate ultimate of which Gormagala is the central focus of this. I implore you at some point to go back and play for you for yourself so you can truly experience gore in its rawest and true form. I'll still never forget the first encounter with it while you're on the ship, and this was so early in the game. It was something I had never really felt in a Monster Hunter game. Horror. Gore Magala was incredible in the way that every moment it was in the spotlight, you felt a sense of dread. Think of all the monsters you fought. How many of them have really brought that feeling when you face them? Safi? No. Shara? No. Well, maybe Shara just with those eyes alone. But even in game, the NPCs were engulfed in fear and a sense of dread, not knowing anything about this monster that was spreading a devastating plague and had the appearance that backed it up. Gore felt as if it was an intelligent enemy as well, jumping in to take down ace hunters that were weak and us having to fight them off while the others got away. The fights kept you on your toes and filled you with that same dread, experiencing the frenzy virus for the first time and wondering what the hell that purple bar on your name that kept filling up was, it kept that feeling of dread in the forefront and God forbid the first time that you let that bar fill up, because then you got to experience the true terror that is Gore Magala. From its appearance to its theme, Gore Magala gave us a villain that fueled the best story in Monster Hunter to date. Don't get me wrong, there are so many things that make For You Story the best, but it means nothing if Gore Magala isn't there to base it around. Let's dive a little deeper into those fights that I talked about that filled you with dread and frenzy, specifically the frenzy part. Gormagala would infect you with the frenzy virus and it could go one of two ways. The bar could fill up and you would take substantially more damage with each and every attack or would throw at you. On the other side of things, if you were precise enough with your attacks and racked up enough damage, you would overcome this frenzy virus and actually be rewarded with 15% affinity for some time. Now, that system on its own was absolutely fantastic mechanic but it goes even deeper with some of the synergies available and furthers the reason why people love gore so much and why that love is 100% justified. There was actually a skill known as antivirus. It would help to stave off the frenzy virus as it acclimated, and you remember that 15% affinity you would get from overcoming it? Antivirus would actually take that affinity boost and double it. A 30% affinity boost isn't too shabby at all, and going against one of the Magalas or an Apex monster, you'd see that pretty consistently. Think about what they'll be able to do in Sunbreak with this. Not only will they surely bring the frenzy mechanic back, but it brings in the opportunity for skills that tie directly to gore like we have with different soul skills with Teostra, Kushala, and Camellios. In Generations Ultimate, there was actually an art you could take, Frenzy Fever, where you would self-inflict yourself with the frenzy virus and ultimately look to overcome it for that affinity boost. Now, this isolated sounds a bit lackadaisical, but the mechanic itself has so much potential. Not to mention that with chaotic gore weapons, this could lead to an upwards of 70% affinity for overcoming the virus. But this of course would take amending since we don't have hunter arts anymore. The overall potential for this system is hype inducing, and it really brings to the forefront Monster Hunter at its peak and the sense of uniqueness and creativity. Now when it comes to the actual fight, there's one thing that I love about gore more than most other monsters in the series. His attack have that weighty feel to them. There's one attack in particular that's earth shattering, that just gives you the exact feel of how much of a powerhouse the monster is. And that feeling continues with each and every attack. Aside from the occasional brush with its tail, every attack is going to send you flying. 
Speaking of flying, it also has that in its repertoire, whether it's flying across the map or flying up into the air. If you're a gunner and you think you're just going to kite this thing, you're going to have your work cut out for you. Gore has plenty of ranged attacks, and the best part is that all of these attacks are going to infect you with the frenzy virus as well. Another aspect of Gore's fight that I really enjoy is the little AoE piles that are left around the area that you're fighting. It's a way of keeping you engaged in the fight and wary of your surroundings. Anytime you're in these areas, you run the risk of getting the frenzy virus or accelerating the rate at which your frenzy bar fills up. Not to mention this monster is absolutely massive, so even his physical attacks have quite the amount of reach. Now, most monsters just kind of enrage and they'll get faster, stronger, but Gore, he absolutely goes savage when this happens. You'll be able to tell when trouble is coming because two dope looking feelers will protrude from its head. Even if these feelers weren't visible, you'd be able to tell he was enraged purely from how much damage it does to you in the state. If you happen to catch the full blown infection of the virus while it's in the state, you might as well hop on the cart yourself unless you can play Kanta levels of perfect for the entire duration. Ah, and uh, just a bit of advice here. Gore is blind, so your little disorientation trick with flash bombs ain't gonna work here. The good news, my friends, is that you can actually knock Gore out of this state much like you can with Rajong. The bad news is that you're probably still going to have to get up close and personal to do so. So it's going to sound like I'm exaggerating, but I'm absolutely not when I say that Gore Magala has some of the best gear in the series. Yes, I said gear and did not say armor or weapons specifically because everything that you can make from Gore materials is beyond awesome. And guess what? It only gets better with his 5th gen debut. I mean, just look at it. Would you just look at it? Aside from Espinas, Gore was introduced in 4th gen where we had all of the weapons available, so we know what each one will look like. Personally, I can say that there's not a single weapon design that I don't like. I'm an absolute sucker for claw dole blades, and you know Gore was bound to have them. But I do have to give a huge shout out to the Switch Axe, which I wouldn't hesitate to say is the best looking Switch Axe in the entire series. Even the Palico and Palamute armors are incredible. This is literally what I meant by having some of the best gear, period. Now, of course, this was just an introduction to Gore Magala, but I think it's extremely easy to see why Gore has been such a fan favorite since the moment it terrorized our ship. But honestly, just look at this magnificent creature. Gore's design is top notch and easily one of the best in the series. He was a monster so strongly tied to the story of 4U and had such an impact on it that we never really expected it to see it for some time. Gen U was a bit of a celebration title, so it wasn't surprising there, but in Sunbreak, I was absolutely floored. Holding so much weight like Gore does, I'm interested to see if he does end up having some kind of effect on the Sunbreak story, whatever that may be. It's not every day that we get to take on a monster that's so great from top to bottom. Gore takes the amount of quality that this already stacked Sunbreak roster has and elevates it to levels that go beyond the stratosphere. If you're familiar with the streamer Skoy Skull, you know just how much he loves Gore Magala, and in this moment, we should all be Skoy. But that's going to be it for this one. Gore is back and better than ever. If you haven't fought this bad boy yet, I can promise you it'll end up being one of your favorites and very much lives up to the hype. If you'd like to continue the conversation and join us in talking about why we love Gore, feel free to join the Discord. Link in the description below for that one. Subscribe for more Sunbreak content and catch me streaming day one on Twitch. Have a great night, happy hunting, and I will see you guys in the next video.